The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, a tribute to a legend. I could stand by Pat Robertson's side and hold up his hand and see God do incredible things for people. A man who made history on the air and off it. CBN was established by God using Pat Robertson as his vessel. We remember the incredible life and legacy of Pat Robertson today on The 700 Club. If we believed God as much as Pat Robertson did, I think we'd all be amazed at what we could accomplish in this world. Well, welcome to the 700 Club, and thanks so much for joining with us. We've received an overwhelming response to the news of my father's passing yesterday morning. Friends from all over the world are expressing their gratitude for the life he lived and the impact he made on the world. Many remember Pat as a pioneer in Christian broadcasting, a courageous culture warrior, a true champion, and most of all, a faithful servant of Jesus Christ who spread the gospel around the world. Charlene Aaron has the story. Lee Webb, the 700 Club news anchor for 19 years, remembers Pat as a visionary who loved God. Everything he did, he had that passion for excellence. I think it's incorrect to say that Pat produced Christian television. He wanted to produce excellence in television that was Christian. His zeal and that passion was contagious for all of us who had the great privilege and honor of, of working for him and with him. Former 700 Club co-host Sheila Walsh. He was like a father to me. You know, I lost my dad when I was five and, and so, through some of the most difficult years in my life when I was struggling with my own diagnosis of clinical depression, I found Pat to be the most compassionate, loving and supportive person. That influence extending beyond the CBN family. Pat Robinson invested in other people, uh, in other ministries. Uh, a lot of people don't do that. Bishop T.D. Jakes says with all that Pat accomplished, sharing the gospel was paramount. He was the salt of the earth. That's what the Bible said we were supposed to be, to go into all the world, not just all the church, and influence the way the world thinks. Our country is better because of Dr. Pat Robertson. Pastor Jack Graham saw Pat as a happy warrior who tackled key topics. He took on all the issues of our times, the important biblical and cultural issues. He stood strongly for the sanctity of life, which is near and dear to the hearts of so many of us. And he was always willing to put his faith in action. Action that included a strong vision for taking the gospel around the world. And for that, former U.S. Ambassador for Religious Freedom Sam Brownback calls him a true champion. Unmatched, unparalleled. Uh, he really opened up a number of places. And he was, again, a pioneer there with all of the broadcasting uh, that he in various iterations and groups has been associated with, with taking the good news around the world. Good news that is sure to be remembered and rewarded. The passing of Pat Robertson sure made heaven richer, sure left earth poorer. A dear man, visionary, a man of deep faith, pioneering spirit, courageous. He definitely is one of the most transformative Christian leaders, not just of our lifetime, but in the past few hundred years. As Paul said, you know, I fought the good fight, I kept the faith, I finished the course. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me that day, not to me only, but to all who love his appearing. I have no doubt that Pat has, is receiving that reward and has heard Jesus say to him, well done, good and faithful servant. So heaven's gates were open to him, but I also think he had an abundant entrance. And you look at the things he did and what he's left behind, and surely the angel stood up to applaud him as he walked through the gates. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Well, from Washington, D.C. to Israel, national and world leaders are also paying tribute to my father's legacy. Ephraim Graham has those stories from the CBN Newsroom. Ephraim? Gordon lawmakers and other political leaders are praising Pat's influence on American politics and culture. CBN's Jenna Browder has their tributes. 
Matt Robertson's impact on politics and Washington goes back almost 50 years. In addition to interviewing presidents and running for the office, Pat encouraged people of faith to get involved and make a difference. Now our nation's top leaders are grieving his loss and celebrating his amazing legacy. Pat Robertson impacted America and our world for our values like few other Americans ever have. From Mike Pence to Nikki Haley. The ability he had to bring people in, to remind them about the love of God, and to make them understand that there was a path for every person in their life was extraordinary. The political world is remembering Pat, many calling him a friend, and noting his mark on people and politics. Former President Trump calling him an incredible and powerful voice for faith and freedom. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis tweeting he and his wife are saddened by the loss. And on Capitol Hill. Just proud to call him a friend. And the thing I admired most, he was a strong Ronald Reagan uh, Republican conservative on national defense. And Israel had no better friend. People see him as a commentator, as a media person, as all these different things on it. But first, he was a, he was a dad and a grandfather and a husband and a pastor. And he just maintained that heart. His great love for people just came through. Pat had a strength that no matter what challenges faced America, faced the world, that he rest, rested comfortably in, in the strength and love of his Savior. What an impact he had on this country. And um, he will be missed, but he will be remembered very fondly. All agreeing the world has lost a giant of faith and politics. We express our deepest sympathies in our prayers, but we know that America is poorer, but heaven is richer. God bless Pat Roberts. In Washington, Jenna Browder, CBN News. As you heard in that piece, one of Pat's greatest legacies was his stand with the state of Israel and the Jewish people. Israeli and Christian leaders in Jerusalem shared their gratitude for that steadfast support with CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell. Former Israeli ambassador to the U.S. Michael Oren, a frequent guest on the 700 Club, remembers how Pat stood with Israel. We're talking about support for Israel during some of our hardest times, support for Israel's right to defend itself, our right to exist as a Jewish state. I remember during the dark days of the Second Intifada, 2000 to 2004, 2005, when there were no tourists in the state of Israel. The hotels were empty. The flights were empty. It was Pat Robinson and uh, the evangelical communities uh, who revered him, uh, that kept support for Israel and our economy uh, going through those very dark days. Um, we owe him an historic debt. In 1974 in the Mount of Olives, Pat vowed to the Lord he would always stand with Israel and the Jewish people. He certainly kept his vow to the Lord and we are the grateful recipients. Jerusalem Deputy Mayor Flor Hassan Nahum remembers Pat's friendship and love for the city of Jerusalem. We had no better friends than uh, leaders like Pat Robertson for the city of Jerusalem, for advocating for the embassy move, for advocating for the full recognition of Jerusalem as the capital city of the state of Israel and the Jewish people. He saw us as no less than a holy proof that God exists, the plight of the Jewish people, how we got here, for him was nothing short of a miracle. In 2010, the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem presented Pat with a Lifetime Achievement Award for his unwavering support for Israel. He stood up for Israel and, and made that commitment to stand with this nation uh, well before a lot of the major Christian leaders did back in the 70s. I think Israelis know that he was one of the pillars and the pioneers and patriarchs of Christian support for Israel today. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu tweeted, he was a great friend of Israel, second to none. Over the decades, he led millions of his followers in supporting the Jewish state. I will fondly remember our many meetings together, his warmth and steadfast friendship, which stood the test of time and circumstance. There was nobody who loved Israel in the Christian world more than Pat Robertson. I don't think anyone had more influence on the Christian world. Because Pat Robertson had built CBN from scratch, that gave him a reach. It gave him an influence that was outsized, I think, any other person in the pro-Israel Christian space. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. An incredible life. And as I shared with my family last night, we would not be here without him. Gordon.
Uh, we will stand with Israel. We will continue our support for the Jewish state. We will continue our, our support for the undivided capital, Jerusalem. It is the city of our God. It's Psalm 48, the mountain of his holiness. And here's the conclusion of that psalm. For this is God, our God forever and ever. He will be our guide, even to death. And he was our God. He was my father's God. He will be our God, even unto death. Terry? Well, still ahead, memorable moments of Pat with his buddy, Ben Kinchlow. See how Pat made television history when he chose Ben to be his co-host. And hear Ben describe the tremendous impact that Pat made on his personal life as well as the world. That's all coming up. And then also ahead, CBN News reporters reflect on Pat's leadership, his walk of faith, and his inspirational influence on their careers and their personal lives as well, right after this. He loved a great scoop and good storytelling. That's how one CBN reporter described my father's zeal for the news. And he inspired a generation of journalists and producers to work at CBN. From war zones to the campaign trail to the mission field, our reporters traveled the world with him as he followed God's leading. Here are their personal reflections of how his faith and influence shaped their lives. Charlene Aaron grew up watching the 700 Club, never dreaming she would one day work for its host. His heart for souls, his heart for prayer, his heart for Jesus, he loves Jesus with all of his heart. That is why I wanted to work at CBN, because like, I want what he has. Ephraim Graham watched as well. There was a rule in my house when I was a kid, you could not watch television in the morning before school. The one exception was if you were watching Christian television. Years later, after accepting a job at CBN News, he walked the campus for the first time. And I could really clearly hear God saying to me, this is what believing in a vision looks like. This is what it looks like. This is what obedience looks like. Pat inspired generations of reporters and producers to work at CBN and sometimes directly paved the way. He took a chance on me almost a decade ago, advocating that I be put on air despite my youth and inexperience, which in turn allowed me to step into a calling that God had put on my heart. When I met Pat, I told him that I thought I always wanted to work at NBC, but God called me to work at CBN. And he said, it sounds like you had a case of spiritual dyslexia. Dale Hurd first met Pat working for another network as he covered him on the campaign trail running for president. I remember being so impressed with his breadth of knowledge about policy issues. And that was the beginning of my coming to CBN News. Gary Lane was his senior campaign press secretary and remembers a tough day on the trail when he asked Pat why he was running. He said, because God has told me to do that. And he said, I can't expect Christians to get involved in the political process if I'm not willing to put myself out there and do the same. Lane later produced for Pat after the Berlin Wall came down, encouraging him and Billy Graham to walk along the wall. It was a very historic and touching moment as both of these great evangelists looked into East Germany and said, we're going to claim that for Jesus. George Thomas traveled to India with Pat and remembers incredible ministry, including speaking to a crowd of half a million people in New Delhi. Yeah, I'm fixing the mic and he says, pray for me, I'm nervous. And I said, sure, and I put my hand on him, on his chest, and I just prayed with him. And then a few minutes later, he goes up and gives this powerful message. And after, you know, half an hour, you know, 45 minutes of preaching, Half the crowd give their lives to Jesus Christ, and it's a powerful moment. Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell says Pat's vow to stand by Israel in the 1970s not only endured for his lifetime, but made a profound mark around the world and at CBN. Pat kept that vow, and I believe the CBN global family has been blessed because of Pat's steadfastness and faithfulness to stand with Israel and the Jewish people. In 2006, Wendy Griffith traveled with him to Israel to cover the war with Hezbollah. 
He was fearless. I mean, he's literally, you know, there's rockets going ahead over us, and he's doing it a live shot with Fox News. And sure enough, a Katusha rocket whizzes overhead and explodes on the mountain behind us. In all the CBN newsrooms from Virginia Beach to Washington, D.C., Pat's love for the news was contagious and inspiring. He was always so up to speed and up to date on what was happening in the latest medical news. One of the things that always struck me about Pat was his love of the news. A great scoop, good storytelling, a compelling lead. Many at CBN News also recall the details he remembered about their families and the times he showed up. I'll just never forget his smile, though, at my wedding. I think he was happier, as happy as I was, for sure. Good morning. But perhaps Pat's biggest legacy for reporters and producers was his life of faith. When I think about Pat, I think about how he listened to God. He was always listening to God. When I think of Pat and his life and his legacy, I think of what the Bible calls an oak of righteousness. Um, giving shade to generations. I believe Pat's legacy centers on the idea of his obedience and also his audacious faith. It's what led him to do foolish things in the eyes of the world, like starting a Christian broadcasting ministry with no experience, with little support and barely any finances. I think what he would want people to understand is that the glory and the honor belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. He simply said yes to God. He yielded to God, and by doing that, he allowed God to work through him in just an incredible, supernatural way. Reporter Abigail Robertson, who is also Pat's granddaughter, says this giant faith never wavered, even in his last moments. We walked in the door, and it was really the first time that he acknowledged that um, he was nearing home. He was probably heading to heaven soon. And he, we walk in, and he goes, I've been asking the Lord, what do I need to tell them? What do I need to share with them? And he just looked at us and he said, trust God. God is always faithful. Never, ever, ever has he failed me. Never, ever, ever has he let me down. Heather Sells, CBN News. Let those words inspire you. God will never fail you. He will never let you down. He stands by his word to perform it. All he's looking for is you to say yes. Abraham, amen, God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. That was one of the signature verses my father followed. When God spoke, all he would do is say, yes, sir, uh, let's go out and do that. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have enough money. I don't have anything. But if you're telling me to do it, then I know it can be done. Just amen, God. And in that, you can walk into the same blessings that my father walked into. Let that legacy be your legacy, too, and let his memory be a blessing to you. Terry? Well, up next, former black militant Ben Kinchlow talks about the first time he ever met Pat and tells how he found out he was hosting the show solo just minutes before air. Watch Unforgettable Moments with Pat and Ben when we come back. Well, they were an unlikely duo, the son of a United States senator and a former Black Panther. They were also a match made in heaven. Pat and Ben Kinchlow co-hosted the 700 Club for nearly two decades. And for much of that time, I sat in the hot seat between them. Here are the late Ben Kinchlow's reflections of Pat. Actually, I was working on a drug and alcohol rehabilitation farm in a little place called Killeen, Texas. I was a, as you know, former black militant who had met Jesus Christ dramatically and ended up on this drug and alcohol rehabilitation farm where I was ministering to drug addicts. And the word went up to this guy named Pat Robertson, whom I never heard of, about this black former black militant who was now seeing miracles take place on his drug farm. So I went down to do the 700 Club interview with Pat. And so I just had a great time, went back to the farm. A couple of weeks later, maybe a month or so, I get this call from a lady named Ruth Eggert. And Ruth called up and said, Pat Robertson wants you to come to Portsmouth, Virginia and help him do a 700 Club. So I showed up here and while I'm in the studio, 
in Portsmouth. This is the big studio. Lights everywhere, people walking around, audience coming in, live music, cameras moving around. Boy, I'm excited. I'm over there in the counseling center, you know, talking, hi, how you doing? Good to see you. Wave, the waving to the people. And then the floor director comes in and says, uh, Mr. Kinslow, uh, we have about five minutes there. Would you take your place? I thought, okay. So I went over there, wanted to hear some more of my testimony. So I go over and sit in the guest chair. And I'm sitting in the guest chair, waving at the folks and watching all the stuff going on. And I noticed the floor director kept looking at me. And finally came up and said, uh, Mr. Kinsler, we got about two minutes to air. Would you please take your place? So I said, well, where do you want me to sit? He looked like I punched him in the stomach. He said, you mean they didn't tell you? I said, tell me what? He said, Pat and Henry are in Israel. You're the host of the 700 Club. And that's how, that's how I got started on the 700 Club. But as I said, Pat was a risk taker. What I had a sense of was that this was a part of something I'd never seen before. I don't think people realize what a pioneer Pat Robertson was in this case. There was never any such thing as 24-hour Christian broadcasting. And that's all we did, 24 hours a day. We talked about Jesus or had somebody talking about that. I'm telling you, it was probably the most exciting period of time that has transpired in the last several decades. It was just a marvelous time. I looked over, his shoes were off, and he was on his face before the Lord weeping because of the presence of God. And he, he's just such a precious friend, one I love very much, Ben Kinchlow. Come over here, Ben. God. We had the matchless privilege of being a part of what God was doing, and I could stand by Pat Robertson's side and hold up his hand and and pray with him and you know cry with him and laugh with him and see God do incredible things for people. Something as simple as your problem is sin, very simply defined as your determination to do it your way. And that's the essence of what sin is. But we say, man, there was never any sense here at the 700 Club of Pat acting or letting us act or any of us feeling like we were, quote, somebody special. We were right on the cutting edge of things that nobody had seen before, nobody had heard before. And I know a lot of people thought we were crazy talking, sitting on there saying, God's healing somebody of this or God's doing this or somebody's coming back home. But the good news is God did it. Whatever your, the prayer is, God is saying okay to that, to move ahead boldly in whatever it is you're going to do. Bless our nation's leaders, the members of Congress and the courts, and God, the, the administration. It made such a powerful impact because it was so not yesterday. It was today, but more than that, it was what God was doing for tomorrow. And I think that's the thing that for me, personally, and I will never get over. Just continue to praise Him right now, in, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And whenever we got in a jam, we'd go down to our prayer meetings, and we would pray, and God would intervene. And I guess you could say that CBN was established by God using Pat Robertson as his vessel. Pat never tried to be something he wasn't. He tried his best to do what God was showing him to do. The whole concept of joint prayer, the whole concept of having people call in and pray, the whole concept of having people join together and saying, I want to give $10 a month to start something called the 700 Club. And, and, and he never changed that basic format, 
trusting God and giving people a chance to be a part of what God was doing in the world. And so people who contributed to the 700 Club got a chance not only to see the gospel broadcast in Portsmouth, Virginia, in Dallas, Texas, in Atlanta, Georgia, but before long, man, we were broadcasting in the Philippines, and we were over in Africa, and we were all across the world, and people were all a part of that. And so when we got salvation reports of somebody on the other side of the world, well, Mamie Smalls, who donated ten dollars a month in Portsmouth, Virginia, was part of that. To this special edition of the 700 Club. Ben and I are here in Los Angeles. Can you believe this, Pat? I paid attention. It showed all of us for the first time that Christianity did not have to be circumscribed by four walls. And that you it would be possible to have an intelligent non-preaching conversation with people about things that were formerly reserved just for the church milieu. But now here was a man named Pat Robertson talking to the President of the United States about Jesus Christ. Here was Pat Robertson talking to the leaders of major countries about the reality of what God could do. And here was Pat talking about how Christians should be involved in politics and how Christians should be involved in their communities and how Christianity was something that could ch literally change the world. And I think that for a lot of people expanded their horizons, opened up their vision, and a lot of pastors who heretofore had not done that were now doing things that they perhaps had never done before. He wasn't one guy on camera and then you go off camera and he was somebody else. He was always just Pat. I never called him Dr. Robertson, and it was years before I found out what his first name was because I always called him Pat. Everybody called him Pat, and that was kind of the way it was, and no matter where we were, whether we were meeting with the President of the United States. Great pleasure. Thanks for coming. We were in the Philippines meeting with the Prime Minister. It didn't matter where we were. Pat was always Pat. And, and that never changed. Well, I'm glad we can get hot meals to you, and it's just a thrill for me to be with you. It would be very difficult for me to um, pin it down to one thing. He was a minister. He was a broadcaster. He was a pioneer. He was an innovator. Uh, he was an educator. Uh, he was involved in politics. Operation Blessing, how do you nail it down to one simple thing except to say Pat believed God and if we believe God as much as Pat Robertson did, I think we'd all be amazed at what we could accomplish in this world. They had a very, very special relationship. Well, still ahead. Sylvester Stallone, George Foreman, Charlie Daniels, Kathy Lee Gifford, and many more. Stay tuned for their memorable moments with Pat. That's coming up. Well, my dad was a pioneer in Christian t TV. He was also the consummate television host. Countless spiritual leaders, celebrities, politicians, and even presidents appeared on air with him. Here's a look at some of those memorable moments. The Holy Spirit isn't an optional extra, as some people think it is, as if God has a smorgasbord of goodies you can take some and leave others. He is going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Now this is the privilege and the heritage of every Christian. 
I was here uh, like you were some years ago. There were stern-faced guards and in uh, towers with machine guns That's willing right. to destroy. And now these people can come in freedom. It's a it's a heady day for Germany. It is. It's a pleasure to welcome uh, Hollywood's leading grandfather, Charlton Heston. Charlton, so good to have you with us again. I love to be back again. Oh, it's a joy. It is an absolute joy. Thank you for letting me borrow your audience one more time. And one of the most amazing people in the whole country is our great friend, Pat. Will you come out here, Pat? Look at him. One of the great people. Yes, sir. I was chosen to do something. I was never a writer. I was never an exemplary student. All of a sudden, one day, I started writing Rocky. I wrote it in three days, and it wins the Oscar. And I cannot assume that I did this all on my own. I really do not believe that for for a second. George, I'm so glad to have you with us. You know, you've been here on several occasions. But how does somebody is as nice as you get to be a heavyweight champion? You 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 knock people down. <laughs> uh, only trying to to defend myself. Oh, is that what? <laughs> God bless you. Yeah. Man, I'm so glad to see you. It's been too long. It's been it too has long. been. You're looking very well and very fit. Well, I feel well and I feel fit, and so do you. You feel great. How is it? You know, you have a son. His name is Cody. Really? And you know, his son, your son, was born the same day I was. Did you know we were, our birthdays are the same? March 22nd. That's right. Just a few years apart. Just a few years. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know the year you were like, born. Like, this is a book called Breakout. Joel Osteen is just being released, and Joel, it's so good to see you again. God oh, bless you. Well, it's my honor to be here. Thank you so much. We, I, I grew up watching the 700 Club, and my yeah. parents were just all, I don't want to say fans, but big admirers, and just love the work that you do. Well, from Beverly Hills, California, Pat Boone. Yeah. Hey, man. Good to see you. God bless you. What Great a to see privilege. You. You look so you good. You got your boots, I got my butt. Hey, so. hey, you do. I mean, the same <laughs> symbol. You never stop. Oh, swing down, church, stop it. Let me ride. Swing down, church, stop it. Let me ride. Rock me lower, rock me lower. Come and easy. I got home on the other side. I, I just uh, want to welcome a good friend, Charlie Daniels. God bless you, and thank you for coming back with us. Mr. President, it's a pleasure to have you with us on the 700 Club. Pat, it's good to see you again, sir. And the Bible says, without a vision, the people perish. We need to grasp what made this country great. We need to, to rekindle all of those values that allowed us to love each other and to work hard mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and to care. That's what America was about. The G8 is kind of a place to crystallize this, but what happens after this? What's the follow-up that you see across America and around the world? Well, it's like you said, the G8 is just a moment. It's a, it's a, a start, really. This is the place where we can begin. It's a pleasure to welcome back a dear friend, Art Linkletter. Good Thank to see you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you for asking me back. Well, it's, 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 been it's, a, it's been 35 years. I must not have done well. <laughs> Well, we didn't have any kids for you to interview. That was the well, problem. there were kids then. <laughs> I had invented children in 1941. Oh, I see. All right. I don't mean invent, but I used them as people instead of as professional performers. Mm -hmm. Instead of having them play a flute or a piano, I asked them what their mother told them not to say when they came on my program. <laughs> and they told you? Yeah, one little boy said, she said, I can say anything I want, but don't get this shirt dirty. It's brand new, and we're going to take it back. <laughs> I love it. Another one said, my mother told me not to tell you if you have a bad breath. And I said to the kid, well, do I? And he said, I'd rather not say. <laughs> like a rhinestone cowboy Getting cards and letters From people I don't even know And offers coming over the phone See you, sir. You. Thank you all. Me too. Great song. Thank Boy, you so much. It's great to have you back with us. It's certainly wonderful to be back here.
They get to do that song. Boy, I just love that song. What is the, the, the future, do you see it, for this nation, for America? And uh, you know, Western Europe, there hasn't been the persecution and so forth now, but what do you think is coming up here? <laughs> You know, may I, may I answer with a little story? Certainly. Uh, you know, there was an, uh, a black pastor who said, I do not like to read books where you read all very sad things. But then I always, when I must read it, I always read the last chapter. <laughs> when I see, oh yes, they get each other, and they lived very happy for the rest of their life. Now then I can also read the rest of the book. Eh? <laughs> when, when, I, when I see in the Bible, and I read what will happen and what is happening, mm -hmm. then I do the same, and I look at the last page. <laughs> For at the last page, uh -huh. here is written such beautiful things. The, the best is yet to be. Mm -hmm. uh, the, in uh, Revelation 21 is written, um, the home of God is with men and he will live among them. They shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death shall be no more, and never again shall there be sorrow or crying or pain. For all those former things are past and gone. And he who is seated upon the throne said, See, I am making all things new. And that is the answer. Amazing to hear that from Corey Ten Boom, that same verse I got when my mother was dying and it was a great inspiration for me to pray over her, Lord, let there be no more pain for her. And to see her pass peacefully, to see my father pass peacefully gives us hope. We have hope for tomorrow because of what Jesus has done, what he has promised to do at the end of the book. You can look for yourself, you can read it for yourself. Yes, are we in the middle of a lot of tribulation. Does he even promise that we'll have that? Yes, in this world you will have trouble. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Terry? Well, up next, more memorable moments ahead. Watch Mr. T drive a big rig for Operation Blessings Hunger Strike Force with Pat riding shotgun when we come back. Over the years, CBN has delivered humanitarian aid to countless people, both here and also around the world. Well, one of our most memorable outreaches, the Hunger Strike Force of 1994. CBN brought its A-team to 17 cities. A convoy of Operation Blessing trucks stocked with food and supplies, Pat Robertson and the one and only Mr. T. Safety first, everybody, because we got a lot of a lot of food back there. We don't want to damage the food, and we don't want to damage the passengers. All right, all right. Operation Blessings Hunger Strike Force got its start in the Big Apple, New York City. Five big tractor trailers loaded with 200,000 pounds of food traveled many a mile to meet hundreds of volunteers eager to distribute this much needed food to the less fortunate. Here we go, city number three. They are in that toddling town, Chicago, Chicago. So let's go right now, live via satellite to Pat and Terry, standing by in Chicago. Uh, we're looking at to, to distribute 130,000 meals to people as part of our nationwide effort to distribute 2.2 million uh, meals and get things going to the point where we're, we're distributing 10 million pounds of food a month. Right into our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. I think it's nice. It's real nice. Operation Blessing teamed up with Mr. T, the Washington Redskinettes, and Abundant Life Ministries to distribute 200,000 pounds of food to 50,000 people. As always, Mr. T kept things moving right along. That's, I want to see them smile. Yes, yes. There's a blessing. 
Those big red and white 18-wheelers returned home August 18 to Hampton Roads, Virginia to bring relief to thousands of needy right in CBN's backyard. And that brings us to the big D, Dallas, Texas. Home of the Longhorn, a very friendly Longhorn. One only Pat Robertson could love and... Hold it, flash, immediate return to Dallas. We've got an oh emergency situation word. in Dallas. Let's go back there and look who's on the bull. <laughs> Holy moly. Over 4,000 bags of food were given out in Fair Park, and many were on hand to help. Mayor Steve Bartlett, former cowboy Gordon Banks, and of course Mr. T saw to it that 280,000 pounds of food were distributed. Mr. T also made sure that Pat was ready for Operation Blessing Hunger Strike Force City Number 10, Los Angeles. You reckon this is Hollywood? That's Hollywood. Is this what they wear in Hollywood? They look like that? Huh? OB. OB, OB. Yeah. Operation Blessing. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether I look as good on that as you do. Yeah, they look like there were some fun times in this studio and on the road that will never be forgotten. Just great treasures, Gordon. <laughs> We're going to have to get back to some fun times. Yeah. I've got to ask you, what was it like sitting between my father and Ben Kinslow? Those were, they would duel on cowboy boots. Who had the fanciest cowboy oh. boots? That was just one of the things they would duel on. <laughs> <laughs> will give us the inside story. Well, it was a lot of testosterone, let me just say that. I remember sometimes feeling myself go like this as the two of them came across me with what they were discussing. But such wonderful men and so patient, you know, with people like myself coming on the program and, and inclusive, you know, just bringing everybody into the mix. And um, I think it was one of the gifts they had as a duo you know, that they just really opened the door for people to come who loved the Lord and to just walk with them through that process. Remarkable men, yeah, remarkable together, but your dad really was together, quite... Really together, they were quite the team and they certainly made it fun. Yeah, yeah that for certain. And you know, one of the things about your dad that I think is so great, <clears throat> so many times because he was a voice in the culture and, and what was going on spiritually, socially and things, we forget how much fun he was. I mean, he really had a great sense of humor and was willing to engage. I remember years ago, we had a woman on the show um, who was elderly and she had her son who was severely mentally disabled. And she came over to Pat out of the blue and just, she was a little mite of a thing and said, we're going to dance. And she got him up out of his chair. <laughs> and we all were just standing open mouthed as he spun around the... <laughs> the studio with her. I, I would have paid money to see that. Yes, you would have. He, he, it was, been he was a Baptist. That is, you, <laughs> dad, dad, I mean, mom couldn't even get him out on the dance floor. <laughs> oh, I've seen her do her job on that end. She was a master. <laughs> That's great. All right. Well, anyone who watches this show knows how much my dad loved to pray for people, people like Linda Young. Linda was in tremendous pain after breaking her hip until the day she turned on the 700 Club. Linda Young dreamed of having her own horses since she was a little girl. The first time I seen a pony advertised in a comic book, I thought, I gotta have that. Now retired, she has eight. It's a full-time job, but that never bothered Linda until a few years ago. I was cleaning stalls and I, I felt some discomfort and all of a sudden, my right leg went right out from under me. I couldn't hardly walk from the barn to the house, and I'm like panicking and almost starting to cry. I, I just had to stop at that point. Linda's doctor told her she fractured her hip because of bone deterioration. She said surgery was a last resort and sent her home with pain medication. When I went back to take care of my horses, I was still having a lot, a lot of problems, even with the pain pills. For a while, she worked through the pain to care for her animals. Because of what I do, I have to have my health. When you do horses, they require a lot of work, and they like clean bedding just like people do. Then another setback. Linda took a fall and injured her knee. Now she was immobile and couldn't care for her horses. I was devastated because, you know, I'm like, Lord, you allowed me to have these horses since I've been little, and to not be able to do them now would be a heartbreak for me. One morning, Linda was resting at home 
I was on the couch and I was watching 700 Club and Pat was praying and he mentioned somebody about having a knee problem. You've got a, there's a knee problem and, and a, there's a cracked bone. As he continued, I'm like, that's me, that is me, that's my knee problem. So I felt the warmth and I just, I knew, I knew it was for me. I knew the Lord was doing something exciting. Then she heard Terry Mewson praying. And I don't know if this is the same person, but you're struggling with problems with your bones. You just have, uh, your bones are cracking easily. And God's healing that for you right now. And I was so excited about it. And I'm like, Lord, I received that healing. I received that word of knowledge from Pat. The first thing I did after I received my healing was go out to my barn and jump on my horse and go for a ride. Over the next three months, Linda says she thanked God for his continued healing. The pain in her hip faded until it was completely gone. He is a healer. He's a healer today, not just yesterday, but today and tomorrow, because there's none before him and none after him. <laughs> he is a healer. He is merciful, and there's nothing he can't do. He is a healer. He is merciful, and there is nothing he can't do. Dad loved horses, and so if anyone was out there saying, I've, I've got an injury and I can't ride my horse, he would have had a heart of compassion for him. I remember asking him one time, do you think there are dogs in heaven? And he said, well, I don't know, but I know they're horses, because Jesus is going to come back on one. So right now, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trusting he's taking a long ride. So here we go. Kathy is giving a miracle report of what had happened to her. Rest in peace. Pat was such an inspiration to me throughout my life. I was 12 years old and diagnosed with leukemia. He was there for us. My dad called for prayer and you answered. Two and a half weeks later, we experienced a miracle. The cancer was gone. Wow. Doctors at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center were in disbelief. They said they didn't believe in miracles and there I was, a miracle. They believed, and somehow Pat and the 700 Club helped with that miracle. The prayers, the love, everything. The angels are rejoicing, hallelujah, praising the Lord our God for sending us people like Pat Robertson to influence our lives and to bring us closer to Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, this is Laura. When she was a little girl, she had a rash all over her body that would bleed because she scratched it so much. Doctors couldn't find the answer. One night she was watching the 700 Club and Pat said, lay your hands on the screen and he'd pray, he would pray for healing. So her mom said, Laura Ann, come over here and put your hands on this TV with me. So I knelt down, put my little hands next to hers and Pat prayed. The rash went away and never returned. My mom probably met him at the gate. <laughs> Let's believe for miracles now. God wants to do miracles. You don't have to bargain with him. You don't have to convince him. Be convinced yourself that by his stripes, you were healed. You are healed. Jesus said that when you believe that you have already received, you will have it. You'll be able to say to a mountain, be removed. Mm. So you can say to your disease, to your illness, to your pain, to your infirmity, be removed by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. Let's do that right now. Just as you heard that little girl said, well, I, I had my little hands up on a screen. Put your hands on that area of the body that needs healing. Terry and I will agree in this wonderful verse, if two or more agree touching anything. Isn't anything wonderful? That's pretty big. Let's pray for you right now. Lord God Almighty, we come to you. We come to you with the power and the anointing that you have freely given us, the access you have given us to come even to the throne room, to your presence, to your mercy, to your grace, to your miracle working power. Mm. With that now, we lay hands on our bodies. We say out loud over our own body, we say out loud, be healed and be made whole. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. He has taken away, he has borne my infirmity, he has taken away all my pain now, in Jesus' name. There's someone you're laying your left hand on the inside of your left knee, and you've had tremendous pain in that knee, in Jesus' name, 
be healed and, and do what you couldn't do before. Begin moving it now and realize you've been completely set free. Tara? Yeah, there's someone else. You have a problem with your throat. You can't speak well anymore and also with swallowing. God's opening that up and healing it for you. And someone else, you have this twitch on the side of your face. It's not just like a like a one of those ticks in your eye. It's a twitch that never stops. God is healing that for you right now. Just receive it in Jesus' name. There's someone with an enlarged spleen. I believe it's from an infection. You're wondering about uh, surgery. You're wondering about a lot of different things. You don't have to wonder anymore. God's healing you right now. In Jesus' name, be made whole. And someone else, and it's been so difficult for you just to breathe deeply. You've had asthma, but this is really a, a case that you've struggled with. God's clearing your lungs up for you completely. Lift up your hands and just begin to praise Him as you receive that healing from Him in Jesus' name. And someone else, you've had a fracture on the right side of your skull. It's from a motorcycle accident. God is healing your skull. He's healing your brain. In Jesus' name, be healed. Amen. And amen. If you've been touched by God, share your good report. Let us know. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. We're here for you. If you need prayer, we want to stand with you in prayer. It's a word from James. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he received the crown of life.